my eyeballs are just like, ah! Other than some burrow duck here, we're gonna be talking about Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Came out in 2018 and was one of my favorite films of that year, if not ever. Amazing, just so good on all fronts. I do have some critiques about the story, which we'll talk at the end, but visually it was just like, it was fresh. It was so, so innovative, so cool. I would say the most original animated film since Lego Movie. Lego Movie was amazing too. And it was also directed by Phil Lord and Chris Miller, the people who wrote on this. And that was amazing because the story was good, but then it was also stop motion animation, but done in 3D. This is similar in that it's 3D, but with 2D animation techniques and a lot of other techniques I'll be talking about later tonight. Every single screenshot I took was just a painting. It was just like, just like my eyeballs are just like there i feel like that guy in india jones last crusade where he opens up the covenant and he just starts melting he's just like, ah! that is me watching this it was it was good it was really good and that's one of the reasons why i want to talk about it because i love the movie i think it's great i think it looks good and there's a lot to learn about it. so let's get started this is going to be mostly about shot analysis and things that i noticed about the film and things that I thought were cool. We're, we're gonna talk about shot choice a little bit. We're gonna talk about editing a little bit. Mostly it'll be about composition and the way that things are presented in the movie and how they make you feel. First off, this movie loves to play with Z-Space and what I mean by Z-Space is what it feels like when you're going into the, into the frame. They have a lot of deep, very, very deep shots. And how much do they like it? You know that 21 Savage song, a lot? It's a lot, a lot. Like, how much do they like it? A lot. Da, 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 da. A lot. They they love Z space in this movie. They love it so much. If we just take one of these shots, like right here, this taxi one, look how deep that is. It's just like, like it goes on into infinity somehow. It just looks amazing. Same with the other one below it. Just, just it's deep. This movie is deep. It's Mariana, the Mariana Trench deep. It's, it's Chicago pizza style deep. It's, man, it is. This movie's great. You're gonna hear me talk about how amazing this movie is, the whole stream, and rightfully so, it's so good. Let's take a look at a clip. When they, spoilers if you haven't, I'm sorry, but this is when they escape the lab and they're running away. That clip, everything that was happening in it, except for like one or two shots was either coming toward camera or going away from camera. Everything was just Z space. It was all Z space in your face style. It's just, it is really, really good. <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it there. Like, let's go back and just look at all these shots. Like, even though he starts off in a more of a flat shot, like going left to right, it rotates around him. So you still get that sense of Z space. And then you have Spider-Man going away from camera here. And then you have him coming toward camera. This whole sequence with her coming toward Miles Morales is just insane. Her moving in the background and then him running up the tree. It's all toward camera and the camera's pulling away as it happens. And this is just one example of how much they love to have things happening to or away from camera. He's coming to camera here. He's running up to camera. Like she's coming up at him. Like it's insane. This is that one shot where I was thinking maybe it wasn't Z space is more profile, but it has a really nice silhouette and really, really cool. It gives it a good break. It gives your eye a visual break. And that's something that this movie does a lot and I'll cover in a little bit, but they, they really know how to pace their shots out and have a good rhythm to them between like flat shots and Z space shots. But this one has a ton of Z, Z space stuff where it's coming toward camera, coming toward camera, going away from camera. Like it's all to or away from camera and it really puts you in the scene. It really gives you a sense that you're there. That is what a lot of this movie is about. It's just being in the being in the moment with them. They love Z-Space. Just keep that in mind as you watch all this. And as much as they love Z-Space, they also love flat stuff. Really, really flat shots. And I'm going to call it flat depth. I don't know what you would call it otherwise. I just made it up. And what I mean by that is it's really, really flat shots, but there's, there's a really, really deep Z-Space in it. It's really cool because it, it's both graphic and in that it's 2D, but also very 3D at the same time. It, it gives the element of both somehow at the same time. And it's a really cool technique to use because it contrasts the other shots of the Z space shots where things are coming toward camera. These shots are usually pretty flat or someone's going left to right in them. And it allows your eyes to kind of relax a little bit. 
if you have things coming to the camera like this the whole time, like you're watching a 3D movie, you get really sick really quickly or you get tired of it. So these shots where it's flat and they're usually not moving, there's usually very little moving. It gives your eye a chance to reset, relax. It's also very beautiful. The shots are very well composed. And like I said, they don't feel super flat because there's a lot of depth in it. They're flat and deep at the same time. So let's take a look. And this is something that Alberto Miago is really known for. If you watch the rock band Beatles trailer from like 10 years ago, you'll see a lot of the same techniques used in that as you'll see here. So this first shot here is very, very flat. Like you have a very flat horizon line. The, the horizon line is down here. All these buildings are just very graphic. And the thing that gives it the depth is that it just recedes and the vanishing point is somewhere in back of the car over there, but it is a really, really flat shot. Most of these flat shots have it framed in the center of the shot. I would say the center of the shot would be like around here, or the focus of it would be here, the center of the shot's up here or something, but they're really, really flat, but also very deep because they go so far away. Same thing with the Spider-Man shot over here. These elements are very, very graphic and very flat, but it's nice because it creates these nice graphic elements. They create really nice silhouettes of all the characters. Like he stands out very well, especially because it's dark to light. But you also have the city in the background, which is very, very far away. So it creates this depth. They're flat shots, but there's a lot of depth to them. Just like, so your eye reads it very quickly because it's a graphical shot first. And then it, then as it wanders around this shot, it starts to realize, oh no, it's, it's very deep and there's a lot to look at and there's a lot, a lot for your eye to explore. So you're, you're not going to ever be bored by these longer shots or bored by seeing them because there is enough complexity to them. There's enough graphical elements to them that they also read really quickly. So it's, it's just really beautiful stuff. Like really, really nice, nicely composed. They're, the colors are really gorgeous. They feel realistically colored, but also hyper realistic in the sense that you get like these, a lot of magentas in it. Overall, these shots are really, really just amazing. Same thing with this one. I think you would see Miles back here swinging in that scene. But again, these shots are very graphic and just very flat, but also deep. It's, I don't know how to describe it other than it's flat and deep at the same time. And it, it does both, it gives you both effects for one shot. I like this shot a lot because it's flat. It's as though you're looking at a crowd of people from across the street or something, or from a building far away, but because they use a telephoto lens on it, it flattens them all out. You have these very silhouetted figures and then they, you just have the faces of Spider-Man pop out in all of them. It's just, it's really nice. It's a really, really nice shot. And I don't know, I just, when you look at these shots, you feel something, you feel like you're a part of them, especially when this one, in this shot, when we find out that Peter Parker died, you feel the sadness of everyone. Everyone's just so stoic and just statuesque. And statuesque in the sense that they're not moving, not in that they're beautiful, but they're just very somber. And it's it creates a very heartfelt moment, especially since you have Miles Morales here and you really feel for him. You feel connected to all these people and their loss. This is another shot that's really flat and deep at the same time. Just look how far back that goes. It just, it goes so far back and you have all these really nice graphical elements in the foreground and you have miles running across. And even the word visions is really smart. It creates a nice, it's like a commentary on miles and what's going on in his life at the time. This one also isn't, it isn't, it isn't as deep as the other ones where you see the city, but it's still very graphical in its execution. You still have like these very cut out type shapes of these characters. And the framing is still very much center, dead center, but the lighting helps to separate out people. It helps create these layers and you see, you see them fade off pretty quickly, even though they should be pretty close to the camera. It's a nice usage of lighting to emphasize that depth in something that would be very flat. This scene is really great. Oh my God, just so, so good. Again, very, very deep shot. The, the horizon line is somewhere like about here and all the lines kind of converge to this area right here. Oh, the horizon line's a little bit higher. Something like that, right? Just, it'd probably be about Miles' head. It's just really, really well composed. You see Miles' silhouette over here. You see all these framing elements that lead your eye up to Miles. And then you have the dad over here with the high contrast. And it's just a, such a nice shot. It's graphic and it's deep and it leads your eye and there's a lot to look at. And it's just very, very beautiful. And it really plays up the, the humor of the scene where you see everyone look at Miles and Miles kind of like, Come on, dad, don't be like that. Oh, do I have to, do I really have to? And then you see the cop car over here, just. And these are all screenshots from the movie. I haven't 
taken anything but screenshots from the movie and look how painterly it is look how much detail there is and everything but it also falls off pretty quickly as well like it falls off in the background and it helps to keep your eye focused on what's important on um, these people because they have a lot more detail the contrast is a lot higher the lighting matches that the lighting is hitting them properly. It's just really, really well composed shots. They help to break up a lot of the, for one, the Z space stuff, but also they like to put these into scenes where you have a lot of close up shots before. These these shots usually will come after a talking scene or in the middle of a talking scene and it gives your eye a chance to breathe again. It also expands the world. It, it makes the world feel very massive and big especially since the buildings in the background are super super tiny you don't usually get that from an animated movie you don't get that sense of scale because usually there will be limitations towards the animation but i think i'm pretty sure that this stuff in the background all this stuff in the background up here are probably matte paintings to be honest so that'll save a lot i'm sure this stuff all back here are matte paintings but like I said, you usually don't get this animation and to see it done and for it to be so seamless, it makes the world feel huge, it's just massive and you feel like you're a part of it every time they cut wide. This shot is kind of the same. It's more of the Z space stuff where Miles is coming towards the camera, but I liked it a lot because he doesn't get too close to the camera. It feels very graphic as he's running and you see the stuff happening in back of him. And it's just another usage of that flat but deep stuff. Does that make sense to you guys? This is something that is very specific to this movie and and very specific to the, the, the style of the movie. I don't know how often you will be able to use this in your work, but if you do find a chance, I would definitely suggest it. I personally try to incorporate stuff like this into my own work with very with having the characters very small and very flat stuff. And sometimes the flat stuff doesn't translate well because it's flat and you, we try to stay away from flat things, but you know, if you can do it like this, this is a good way to inject it into your work. <laughs> 